Today on The Stay at Home Chef, I'm showing you how to make old-fashioned red velvet cake. You are probably familiar with modern red velvet cake, which has a cream cheese frosting and is dyed red with food coloring. Today I'm going to show you how to make the old-fashioned version that achieves its red color from beets and has a cooked frosting called ermine icing. To start, you'll need a large beet, and I've already rinsed mine off and scrubbed off any dirt or debris. And you wanna wrap this in aluminum foil and pop that into a 425 degree oven for about an hour until tender. Once it's tender, you wanna unwrap it from the foil and we're gonna remove the skin. I like to use a paper towel to hold it so my hands don't get dyed red. And then I still use a peeler to peel it off because it's hot. You wanna get all of the skin off. Then I cut it into chunks and place it in a little bowl. And you wanna take a fork, Oop, they're slippery, and mash them up. You need half a cup of mashed beet. Then dump your mashed beets into a large mixing bowl. If you don't wanna mash your beets, you can also just grate them on a cheese grater. To the beets, we're gonna add in one and a quarter cup of buttermilk. And yes, you want to use buttermilk for a red velvet cake. You'll also need four eggs, one cup of warm water, half a cup of vegetable oil, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and last of all, one teaspoon of distilled white vinegar. You'll mix this all together. Already a bright pink color, and we haven't used any food coloring. Beets will do that to you. Next, add in three cups of sugar, three cups of all-purpose flour, half a cup of cornstarch, a third of a cup of cocoa powder, so it has just a light chocolate flavoring. Then you'll need one tablespoon of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, some salt, one and a half teaspoons, and we'll mix this in. You'll notice that it doesn't necessarily have a bright red color. That's not how the original red velvet cake looked. It just had a hint of red. And of course, stop every now and then to scrape the sides and bottom of your bowl so everything gets mixed in. Next, you'll need three lightly greased nine inch cake pans. And you'll see that I've lined the bottom with parchment paper to help the cakes come out more clean. Divide the batter up equally amongst the three pans. Then we're gonna bake these in a 375 degree oven for about 30 to 35 minutes until the centers are cooked through and pass the toothpick test. I just spread mine out and close the door. Now while the cakes are baking, you'll want to start on your ermine icing. Place a saucepan on the stove over a nice medium low heat and add in one cup of sugar and four and a half tablespoons, so just over a quarter cup of all purpose flour. We're gonna whisk this together and kind of let the flour toast for a couple minutes. After a couple minutes, slowly start adding in a cup of milk. And you wanna use whole milk or at least 2% for this. Be sure to add it in nice and slowly so you don't end up with any clumps. Increase the heat to medium and whisk constantly until this comes to a simmer. It's kind of hard to tell what you're looking for, but you'll see there's a foam layer on top. You're gonna wait until that disappears. After a few minutes, the foam on top will disappear and you'll be left with a pudding-like consistency. And then immediately transfer this all to a bowl. And then to prevent a film from forming on top while it cools, you'll take a piece of plastic wrap and place it directly on the top of the mixture so that it's touching it. Place your bowl in the fridge for about an hour to cool until you're ready to make the rest of your frosting when your cakes are out of the oven and completely cooled. When you are ready to make your frosting, you'll need a whole cup or two sticks of softened butter, and preferably that would be unsalted. And you wanna whip this for two to three minutes until it's light and fluffy. You wanna whip it, whip it good. Once you have it nice and light and fluffy, you'll remove the plastic wrap from your little pudding-like mixture and take one to two tablespoons, plop it in the bowl, and then mix that in. You wanna keep on doing that, adding in another spoonful until you've mixed your entire milk mixture in with the butter. 
honestly, this is a slow process and requires a little bit of patience. So just keep going and beat in as much air as possible to make this icing nice and fluffy. Once you have that all mixed in, add in half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and just a pinch of salt. Mix that in and you are done. Once your cakes are completely cooled, you'll be ready to assemble and frost your cake. When it comes to red velvet cake, I like to leave my edges bare on the cake on the outside so that you can see that beautiful red color. But if you would like to frost your entire cake, you'll probably want to double this icing recipe. So keep that in mind when you're making the recipe. As you can see, you end up with a beautiful naked cake. I will write the instructions so that there's enough frosting to cover the whole thing, including the outside. However, if you wanna do it like me, follow the video and have what is written in the recipe. Thanks for watching. You can find the full written recipe in the video description. Be sure to subscribe, like, and follow, and check out the rest of my videos where you can find hundreds of restaurant quality recipes you can easily make at home. See you later.